Hello. Do you work here? Guilty. Hey, you. This Netflix series has given us goosebumps and potentially trust issues. But the behind the scenes of you is nothing like Joe Goldberg has shown us before. You'd usually expect that the main character of a hit television series would put in the most work on set. But it turns out Penn Badgley was given a pretty easy ride. He barely had to remember any lines. I do nothing but look up and the entire crew behind the camera goes, oh, whoa, man, that is phenomenal. That is so creepy. That's, and I did nothing. If you pay attention, you'll notice that most of Joe's dialogue happens inside of his head, meaning Penn was able to read off of the script the entire time. Netflix even made an entire compilation about it. Is that your speechless? This was ironically perfect for Penn because while you may know him best for his role as Dan in Gossip Girl, Penn started his acting career as a voice actor for Nintendo. Yeah! But Penn did still have the challenge of silent acting, where he had to make sure he accurately portrayed the voiceovers. To protect my daughter. It's a boy. I'm f Ironically, despite how good Penn is at playing creepy, he had major doubts about taking on the role of Joe Goldberg and seriously considered turning it down. So much so that showrunner Greg Berlanti had an entirely different actor in mind for the role. Penn was hesitant to jump into another high-profile TV role after his time on Gossip Girl and was also morally conflicted about who Joe was as a character. But he decided to give it a go in the end, and look where that took him. I struggled greatly with the, the, the conflict of playing such a guy. Unlike Penn, actress Shalita did have some trouble bringing to life her character Sherry in season three because of one specific set, Joe's glass case. When her character was captured and stuck inside his cage, Shalita said the small space that was also packed with cameras and the crew was just too much. She even went as far as saying that it was her least favorite part about filming the season because of her claustrophobia. I don't like being in confined spaces with other humans. Her co-star, Travis Van Winkle, didn't make the experience any better. I don't like being in tight spaces, and God, I love Travis, but I also don't love being in tight spaces with other people. It was super uncomfortable. While Shalita needed time to mentally prepare herself for her cage scenes, Victoria Pedretti went into almost all of her season three stunts without any prep. Believe it or not, she actually did the majority of her stunts and physical altercations herself. But she was such a pro that she only needed short consultations and rehearsals on the day of shooting. If we were working with props, lifting things, digging, we would just practice that day to make it look as good as possible. But one thing the cast did have to prep for while shooting season one of the series was the hashtag MeToo movement. During season one, the movement was just coming to light and dominating the media. This made both Elizabeth Lale and Penn very conscious of what their characters were saying and even posting on their social media accounts. The two actors would have conversations with one another before scenes to make sure that they were on the same page when it came to being aware and mindful of the outside world. Penn and I were just always communicated about our fears and, and doubts and insecurities. But despite all of the stressful moments, the cast of all seasons of the series was always able to have fun on set. From filming silly social media videos to pulling pranks on one another, if there was one thing that isn't lacking on the set of the series, it's love. While Joe was having a big transformation himself throughout season three of the series on screen, Travis was having a transformation of his own off screen. In order to portray Carrie properly, Travis had to put in the work to look like that stereotypical California gym head. He put on 10 pounds of muscle that required him to work out five days a week and consult with a nutritionist. In the end, it even allowed him to do some of his own stunts. I built physicality with Carrie that allowed me to play in all of these different fight scenes and these sequences. While Penn may be friendly and warm off screen, he definitely scared some of the cast who were working with him while he was in character as Joe, especially Shay Mitchell in season one. The actress loved playing Peach, but just couldn't get over one creepy scene that she had to film with Penn. Every single time I see that scene, I just get chills. Like it's the creepiest thing ever. It was the moment where both Joe and Peach are watching Beck in the bathtub. Ugh, chills. Victoria Pedretti also had her fair share of disturbing moments to film for the series, but there was one in particular she couldn't shake. It was an intimate scene between her character Love and Joe that, let's just say, ended a little too quickly. The actress just couldn't get over how unrealistic it was. I found that really disturbing. I was like, how are we? That's not real. 
Despite some of the scenes being not so safe, behind the scenes, they took every precaution necessary. For instance, the subway track scene in season one involving Beck and Joe was only shot after Elizabeth and Penn took an eight-hour safety course. This intense training got them certified to work on subway tracks for a year and a half. We can't help but wonder if the certification was ever used after filming Wrapped. Penn? Elizabeth? With a show titled You, you can bet that the word would be used throughout the script. But we weren't prepared for just how many times it was actually used. The official Netflix Instagram account came in clutch with the exact amount. In just the first two seasons, the word you was used 3,857 times. While we don't have an official count for the later seasons, we're going to bet that the word love became a pretty big rival. Love. 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 While a lot of the series is filmed in studios, there are a couple of iconic locations you can visit to get your dose of Joe Goldberg. The bookstore he runs in season one is an actual storefront you can visit in New York City. Mooney's is actually called Logo's Bookstore in real life. However, the inside doesn't look the same. While you can browse the inside, they built the interior in the studio so that they'd have more versatility and flexibility with filming. In the You universe, COVID-19 is already finished, but in the real world, it was still very much happening while filming season three. This meant that they had to get creative with the script, but had to make sure it wasn't super obvious to the audience. So, to get around the restriction of large crowds, they would have the actors share their dialogue before large events instead of at them. There's still exciting scenes that express that, like a party is happening, but maybe they showed up a little early for the party, so everyone's not there yet because that was too many people to have on set that day. There are many more strange aspects to characters 40 and Love, besides their names, but the story behind how the characters got their titles is pretty significant. Not only are they both points in a tennis match, alluding to their wealthy upbringing and love for the sport, Love means zero and 40 means 40. This was done on purpose to reinstate the inequality Love faces growing up within her family. 40 was always worth more than his twin she couldn't win. The television series has more or less stayed pretty close to the storyline of the books they're based on, except for these two characters, Paco and Ellie. It may be shocking to hear they aren't a part of the original story because of how significant their characters are, but they're 100% only in the TV show. The showrunners needed a way to depict Joe's love for protecting children because of his own traumatic childhood. They did this through both Paco and Ellie in seasons one and two. The most amazing part of the behind the scenes is that You didn't premiere on Netflix and was almost canceled when it didn't garner an audience on Showtime. If Netflix hadn't swooped in and saved the day by purchasing the rights, who knows what would have happened to the world of Joe Goldberg. What is your favorite behind the scenes moment? Let us know below. Thanks for watching.